ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನರಸಿಂಹಾಯ ಮಹ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಕಿಷ್ಕಿಂದ ಕಾಂಡ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ವಾಲಿ ಕ್ರಿಟಿಸೈಸಸ್ ರಾಮ ಸಮರಿ ರಾಮಾಸ್ ಆರೋಸ್ ಹಿಟ್ ಹಿಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಲಿ ಆನ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಲಿ ಫಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ಡೌನ್ ಬಟ್ ವಾಲಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೆಡ್ ಎಟ್ ವೆನ್ ರಾಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಡಾಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಲಿ ಹಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಪರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ಇನ್ ಕಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಹೆಮ್ ವಾಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಫಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿಫೀಟೆಡ್ ಮೈಟಿ ವಾನರ್ ಆ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ implicitly there are ancient customaries that deduce many more meanings in visualizing wali as a devotee of rama who wanted to die at the hand of rama like virada and others as means of salvation chapter 17 in detail when rama's arrows hit him then wali the scorcher in war suddenly fell down like a heaved down tree he who glittered with pure golden ornaments that wali fell down on earth while all of his limbs sank to dust like the flag of indra when released from its ropes on the fall of that lord of hosts of monkeys and bears onto earth unilluminated is the earth like the welkin that has forsooth lost its moon though that great souled wali fell onto earth neither his brilliance nor lives nor resplendence nor his bravery are unfettering from his body that superb and jump studded golden pendant given by indra sustained that monkey's chief's life's resplendence and brilliance by still wearing that golden chest pendant around his neck that brave general of monkeys wali appeared like a black cloud smeared with the color of golden sunset all around its edges even though wali has fallen on ground his splendor is as though refulgent devising itself into three aspects namely by his body chest pendant and the arrow of rama which arrow is given to strike the crucial body parts alone and which is still stuck in wali's chest that arrow which effectuates the pathway to heaven now discharged from the bow of rama has brought forth that redemption to brave wali then on seeing him who has fallen in war the one with golden pendant enormous enormously chested mightily armed face golden eye greenish but who is like a fire extinct of its flame who is like indra in unassailability and like upendra in indomitability and who like yayati who has fallen from heaven as well like the sun who falls onto earth from solar orbit when time ender flings him at the end of era such as he is on seeing that son of indra who forsooth has fallen rama neared him followed by lakshmana on seeing the brave wali fallen like that who by now is like fire with extinguished tongues of flames and who is seeing droopily those two valiant brothers rama and lakshmana neared him with due honor on seeing rama and the great mighty lakshmana as well he who fell to the ground flatly hurt by arrows and whose energy and lives are trifling and vigor trivialized thereby that wali spoke these sarcastic words in his proper pride to rama who is taking pride in this conflict as a victor which words at the same time have meaning politeness and self righteousness you are a renowned prince with pleasing looks but which kind of death i am getting now that too when i was in the commotion of conflict with other alas that ignoble death is owing to you and what merit is achieved by you in this undertaking of yours to kill someone who is facing away from you rama is high born they say gifted with mightiness resplendent pursuer of vows mindful of mercy delighter in people's welfare sympathetic greatly enthusiastic and assertive committed in doing good deeds no or of time and action all these living beings on earth are thus relating your renown aren't they to be able to control senses and will forgiveness resoluteness truthfulness and adventurousness o king are the aptitudes of a king and even punishing the wrong doers too concluding that those kingly characteristic will be obtainable in you and even judging by the noble dynasty of yours I have confronted Sugriva though Tara dissuaded me when you have not appeared before me when I confronted Sugriva my concept was it will be inapt of Rama to hurt me while I'm combating 
combating with other combatant besides when i will be unvigilant in that fight not known that your soul is put to death not known that you are the unrighteous flag bearer of righteousness to me not known that you are insidious like straw covered well i have no knowledge that you are a sinner one in the grab of being soul and explicitly mantled under the garb of probity like ash covered fire i am non guilty and i have not committed any misdeed either in your country or in your city nor i have taunted you i am a wanderer subsisting on fruits and tubers and always moving in forest alone such as i am what made you to torture me when i was not combating with you in face furthermore when i was involved with another you are renowned to be a prince with charming looks o king and indications agreeable to rectitude are also appearing on your body will anybody born in kshatriya family a learnt one in vedas thereby who is rid of ambiguities with respect to right and wrong and who is cloaked in an air of probity execute such a ruthless deed like this though born in ragavas dynasty and renowned as a moralistic you are an actually amoral and for what purpose you run around with this moral aspect influencing largesse forbearance probity candor and conquering are the attributes of the king o king and even punishing the wrong doers we as animals live in forest while you are city city dwellers we live by eating fruits and tubers while you enjoy feasts and banquets our nature is such to kill and get killed thus you and me have no correlation and you even if you are a man and a prince for humans you resorted to this animalistic way of killing me lying in the wait thus your action is worse than that of an animal it is not subhuman or unprincely territory gold and silver will be the causes while counteracting somebody in that case by what you are decoyed in this forest of mine or in the fruits of mine in the pairs of property and compliance punishment and pardoning no add mixture is exercised in king craft for the kings do not conduct themselves volitionally but to you your self interest are primary and you are wrathful capricious contriver of king craft and an impetuous shooting happy archer o king you have no devotion to probity nor your mind is firm about material gains but as a free willed one you are distracted by senses how you are answer answerable to gentleman rama when you have done this detestable deed of killing an unoffending one like me with your arrow a regicide a brahman side a cow slayer a thief an inveterate killer an anger brother who marries before his elder all of them will go to hell a slander monger skin flint friend killer and one who makes love with his teacher's wife they all go to the worlds of evil souls no doubt about it my skin is unwearable holy people forbid my hair and bones and uneatable is my meat for your kind of reputable people ragava five kinds of five nailed animals that's a kind of violent rodent a kind of wild boar a kind of lizard a hare and fifthly the turtle are edible for brahmanas and kshatriyas sensible people will not touch my skin and bones o king nor meats from my body are to be eaten such as i am a five nailed animal i am killed Though Tara appraised me with truthful and favorable words I just disregarded her advice owing to my own delusion and gone into the control of time with you as her espouser the earth is not with a correct spouse as with any lady lady who is with full fleshed chastity but with a husband who is without rectitude how are you born to that great soul dashrata when you are artful felonious knavish disposed to a false modesty subconsciously and an evil doer i am killed by an elephant called rama that snapped off its griddle cord called tradition that infringed 
the conventions of righteous people and that dis discarded the god called virtue. On accomplishing this sort of unpropitious, unjustified killing, which is condemned by the righteous people, what can you say when you meet the godly man? The valor that which is displayed on the unprejudiced few like us, O Rama, I do not see that sort of valor is shown by you in respect of your enemies. Had you been in combat with me, en face, O prince, you would have been killed by me, and by now you would have, have seen the death god Yama. An unassailable one, such as I am, I am killed by you while you remain invisible on the field of fight, as with a sinner bitten by a snake while he is asleep. For which purpose I am killed, intending to do good to Sugriva, is incidental to you. You should have assigned me for that purpose in the first instance itself. And I would have brought that evil-minded demon Ravana, the abductor of your wife, in one day, that too without killing him in any fight, but by fastening him by neck, and I would have presented Maithili to you. I would have brought Maithili at your order, even if she is lodged in oceanic waters or in neither worlds, as with the white horse of Vedic lore. The fact of Sugriva getting the kingdom after my going to heaven is proper, but the fact of your killing me in war unrighteously is improper. Admittedly, the world is this way, and if possible, a relevant reply may gently be thought of about your property in killing me. So said Wali to Rama, that great souled son of Vanara King Wali, whom the arrow impaled and agonized on keenly seeing Rama, whose resplendence equals the brightness of the sun, said that much and remained silent when his mouth has dried up. Thus, this is the 17th chapter in Kishkinda Kanda of Valmiki Ramayana, the first epic poem of India, Sri Moolarama Vijayate, Om Sri Krishnar Panamastu.